널 바라보며 yeah. 하고 싶은 말 내가 너의 그늘이 돼줄게 언제나 편하게 기대도 돼 Hey guys, how are you? So I just woke up from like the longest nap. It was probably two and a half hours, which is probably good because I like, I needed it. I was like so tired recently. <sighs> and I have fun plans today. Guess what I'm doing? <laughs> So I'm gonna go see Haikyuu, the movie, it's in our theaters. So if you're not familiar with Haikyuu, it's a Japanese anime volleyball show. It's about high school volleyball, which I know is so random, but my sister was watching it once and I just got completely hooked on it from like watching one episode with her. And then now we're here, I'm gonna go see the movie tonight with a group of friends, so that's exciting. I want to get all ready for that. I think I told you guys about Haikyuu before. And like all of my strange ships. Do you watch Haikyuu? Who do you ship on this show? Because I feel like Bokuto and Yachi need to be together even though I know that's like a terrible ship and like I'm probably the only one out there <laughs> shipping this. On a slightly random note, we have so much construction going on on my street because the city has decided to install new sewer and water lines. And so they're just literally tearing out this really giant strip of um, the road. <laughs> like our road has been closed for up ever now, but it's kind of fun to watch. Like they're just barely getting in front of my house right now almost with this actual giant trench anytime i like walk anywhere my mom is like don't fall into the trench like i'm gonna walk straight into the giant sewer trench <laughs> anyway so everyone be proud of me that i haven't walked into the sewer trench yet but i think first what i need is food and then also i want to do some work for my other channel i have this vision i have a vision i need to tell you guys about the vision <laughs> It's like those construction trucks are making so much noise, but at the same time, I really want to start live streaming today, so it's a, it's a problem, guys. Okay. Okay, testing, can you guys hear me? I don't know why I'm saying guys, this is a test. Hey, testing, can you guys hear me? I don't know why I'm saying guys, this is a test. This is my first time live streaming ever. Okay. I'm hitting the live button. I'm so anxious, guys. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> I, what happens when you hit the live button? I'm just getting a spinny circle. Oh, I have to like fill in details. I'm capable of that. Reading Pride and Prejudice chapter one. Okay, okay, so it's public. It's not made for kids. Um, Oh my word, guys, I've never done this, but we're about to do it now. Hi guys, if you're here, let me know if you can hear me. I asked you guys over on Instagram a while ago if you wanted me to read Pride and Prejudice to you, like live on YouTube, and you said you did. So here I am testing it out for the first time. I've never done this before, so that's both exciting and kind of scary. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, so like I had this whole like little thing I wanted to say about the first chapter of Pride and Prejudice. I had like thought out. And then I froze. Like, you know Miss Congeniality when she goes up there and she was like, I was like Rain Man. That was me. 
So everyone who came to my live stream, thank you. Also, sorry that it made no sense. And it was the most awkward thing ever. I'd never done it before and I froze. Anyway, but also I didn't die. I didn't die. Hopefully none of you guys died over my live stream. So we've accomplished great things. I think I'm gonna go watch this on my TV if I can, just so I can see how terrible I was at live streaming. Like, I'm just getting all the sweetest comments on my reading. Thank you, guys. So this is an idea I've actually been thinking about doing for a really long time, but I just kept getting way too in my head about it and putting it off and putting it off and overcomplicating it and just, yeah, literally, I probably bought that edition of Pride and Prejudice, the pretty blue one from Barnes & Noble, to do this specific thing with probably like back in February. I'm like, I'm gonna read to everyone from this pretty edition of Pride and Prejudice. And then I bought it and then I never did it. <laughs> but look, I'm finally doing it. Yesterday, I just finally was like, you know what? I'm gonna get out of my head. I'm just gonna open the YouTube app tomorrow and hit live and just really do it. And I did not like do test practices or anything. And so it's kind of sad. The footage is not that great from this first episode. Like it cuts out so many times. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that. But I feel like I'm better able to handle that now that I have gone live for the first time. So it's a little bit less scary. And you guys were so nice, so thank you. Ah, oh, I even got one subscriber from this video. Hi, new subscriber. <laughs> On another note, a package finally got here that I have been waiting for, for what feels like forever. In reality, it's probably like 10 days. So, you know, that's forever in 2024 shipping times. But I got something else on Depop. So if you saw my short, I kind of went on like a Depop purse buying extravaganza. And you guys want to see the one I got today? Like, I am so excited about this one. Are you ready? Even see it. It's like wrapped in paper. Okay, let's open it. Can you guess what it's gonna be? Look at it! It's a heart. So this is the Kate Spade heart purse, which I feel like was probably like viral on the internet a few years ago. And the I just am barely getting one. But seriously, isn't this just like the perfect little purse? Look at it, it's like a cute heart. Okay, and it comes with this crossbody strap, which is good. I feel like I tend to like longer straps on all of my purses. So I definitely feel like I want to take this to the movies tonight with my outfit. Okay, so I'm super excited about that. And then I did get an Amazon package, which is less exciting. So these should just be some flats. I am not a huge shoe girl, and I think that's just because my feet are so sensitive. I have very sensitive feet. Basically, they don't like anything that's uncomfortable. Which I know I don't think anybody's feet are, but I just genuinely feel like somehow my feet are less tolerant of anything. So I got these flats that should be a lot less cushy from Dream Pairs on Amazon. I don't know if I'm gonna like them. This is what we have. So I'm looking for the perfect flats to go to Korea in, because I am seriously worried about my feet and how many steps we're gonna be getting over there. So these are actually really, really cute and I really like them. And they're super comfortable. I love like this cross part because then it will actually keep it on my foot. 
I feel like there's just something very, very classic about them that will go with a lot of stuff. I really like these shoes, but I feel like they might be a half size too small, which I am having like the hardest time figuring out my shoe size. I'm having a shoe size crisis, guys. Okay, so ever since I was a teenager, whenever my feet stopped growing, I was eight and a half, like solid. For all of these years, I always bought eight and a half shoes. I don't know what happened during the pandemic because as soon as I started buying shoes again, I'm now suddenly an eight in almost all shoes. Occasionally, I have to go up to eight and a half. Did my feet shrink or did the shoe size get bigger, right? Is it like shoe size inflation? Because I looked it up and your feet don't normally shrink over your lifetime. But did mine? Did mine just shrink? Anyways, now I'm having like the hardest time shopping for shoes because I'll get eight and a half and they'll be way too big. So then I ordered these in an eight and they're like, I feel like they might run a little small. So I could actually do an eight and a half. Why is it complicated? Anyway, I'll link to the shoes and the purse and everything down below like I always do with my favorite products. <sighs> what should I do now? and I think it's because I've not been drinking enough water. In fact, my water bottle's downstairs. <laughs> I have to go down and get it. But that's so much work. <laughs> I'm just gonna whine about it instead while folding laundry. I'm gonna prioritize my health and actually go get my water. Everybody be proud of me. Water. I was realizing it's probably about two hours until I go to the movies. And okay guys, you wanna know what I did? I actually pre-ordered my snacks. So I always get a drink and junior mints when I go to the movies. Just cause it makes life so exciting. Also, I need snacks all the time. Like ever since I went gluten free, like I get hungry so much and I have to like have little bits throughout the day. Anyway, so to survive a movie, I do need snacks. But I pre-ordered them when I bought my ticket online. So I guess when I check in, they're supposed to have the snacks ready or like I can go up to the counter and get them and not have to stand in line, which would be super great. But also I was realizing if I want to eat dinner, I should eat it right now. So I'll be hungry enough to eat an entire box of Junior Mints in like two hours. Life is too hard. You have to get up and drink water and eat food. This guys, this. And it is brilliant. guys ready to see the Haikyuu movie outfit? This is what we have. So of course we have the cute heart purse because that is essential. This dress is from Hill House Home. I also got it off of Depop. I was not expecting it to be as short as it is. So I definitely am wearing like biker shorts under it. But yeah, I think that's one of the things about shopping for clothes on Depop I'm not really loving is it's hard to tell and there's like no returns. So I think I might stick to shopping for accessories mostly on Depop. And then I have my pearls, which I wear with everything. My pink flats that I wear with everything. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty much my fit today. My baby princess is here and she wants to say hi. What do you want to tell them? Are you the ultimate accessory to this outfit? I think she actually just wants food. Got 
편히 앉아 있어 한 걸음씩 가까이 더 기다리다 보면 알겠지 너 따라가다 보면 난네 자취를 남겨줘 세상에는 아마도 정말 너는 뿌리고 나갈 때널 따라가줘 baby yeah yeah okay yeah. 두 손은 안아요 아무것도 가진 걸 없이 나 babe 아직도 나 feeling you on t o n e Okay, so I just got out of the movie. It was so good. Are they gonna do another one? Because like I thought this was it. Like I thought it was the end, but then it totally set it up for like continuing story. So. In other news, I ate most of my junior mints. It's one of the only gluten-free things they sell here. Even the popcorn butter has some sort of gluten-containing ingredient in it, so I have limited options. <sighs> I'm so sleepy. I should just get ready for bed, but I'm also kind of hungry for real food. So I might just eat and keep watching my K-drama. <laughs> I'm watching Queen of Tears through for the second time because I'm so obsessed with it, guys. Have you seen Queen of Tears? It's so good. There's so many good plot lines in Queen of Tears, but for some reason I got super invested in the brother story. Like the main girl's brother and his whole relationship and like everything. I'm like so invested in it. <laughs> anyway. That's the story. My mom's super invested in the aunt story. Like, my friend, like, I've got her watching it and she wants to know what happens to the company. So, I mean, there's something there for everybody. It's just sleepy time, guys. How much is it? It's two years. It's like So, the main actress in this show was also Rachel on Ayers, the older K-drama, and she speaks English so well. And I always think it's so funny because in like every K-drama she's in, she's like, I must flex on my ability to speak English. So I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, but I used to teach English online to kids from like Japan and Korea and China. I think most of them were from China. And I feel like this is a job so many people have done. I would probably still do it, except for the fact that it's so early. <laughs> Like you have to wake up super early to do this job where I live because the, these kids are taking the classes after their normal school day. Often it'd be like eight or nine o'clock at night in China when I would be teaching them at like, I don't know, like five in the morning. I don't know the time difference anyway. But like whenever K-drama actors speak English, it just reminds me of all of my students and they were so cute. <sighs> Also, they were just so funny. A lot of them are really, really, really fluent. They are much more fluent than the average K-drama actor is. You know, I've like thought about this a lot. <laughs> this is my meta-analysis of the English fluency of these kids. And that is, it's the kids who want to communicate something in English that end up being really fluent. Like that's their main goal. Like they genuinely would come into like the online class and they just needed to tell me so bad about the fact that they got a new stuffed animal or about this or about that and they had this message that it, they wouldn't let grammar hold them back, they wouldn't let a lack of vocabulary hold them back, they were going to tell me in whatever English they could because they just, they wanted to communicate. Where the kids who I think looked at English like a subject, like, oh, I have to have like the perfect sentences and know all the words to be able to like get a good grade. Kind of like they saw English as a subject versus a way of communicating their thoughts and feelings. I think that really held them back because then they wouldn't tell me something unless they thought they knew how to say it perfectly. And that just really prevented their overall growth. Anyway, I just feel like there's like some massive lesson in everything for us in that, right? Like about learning and trying and not getting so caught up in the details or perfectionism or like really having a purpose 
right? Language is about communication. It's not about grammar. So, yeah, that's my random rant. My random English teacher rant. I need to go to bed. <laughs> oh.